Yes. All right. Welcome to No Nonsense Market Domination. I am David Wilson, the Business Savage. We are here broadcasting live from the capital of South Richmond, Virginia, USA, for the Savvy Show pre-show. So welcome. Welcome. Got a big show. Big show coming up for you today. Excited. It's called The Questions. The Questions. So the questions that we ask ourselves to ensure we are living in authenticity and that we are providing, we are serving in the best way we know how to serve our world. Because remember, we're trying to change the world, right? So thanks for being on the uh, pre-show. As promised, so it's about it's about fifteen minutes alive. Fifteen minutes alive. Uh, we're gonna have a something free for you. I mentioned this on a live on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at all things David Wilson uh, to catch stuff like this, and you'll catch stuff like this when you show up on the pre-show. So I promised you a something free that will help you save on gas because we we are reopening the world we're reopening the country uh we're broadcasting live from the capital of south richmond virginia usa um and this may help you put some more money back in your pocket so get ready i'm put, getting ready to put in the comments now and it's something called get upside so get upside um Essentially, you you sign in when you, you look around where you are, it, it tracks your location on your phone, uh, let you know what the best gas deals, best grocery deals, depending on the area you're in, best grocery deals, best restaurant deals in the area. Uh, you search, you find the best deal, you go to that station, you check in, and they give you money back that accumulates over time. You can save 15 cents, sometimes 25 cents, sometimes 35 cents per gallon on, on, on your gas or on your groceries or on your, your restaurants, it goes right back in your pocket. So I want to give you this app for free. If you click on the link that I put in the, uh, that I put in the comments, or you can copy and paste that into your uh, search bar and just hit enter and you can um, get the get upside app. It's also scrolling along the bottom with my uh with my promo code there uh, so you can use that that promo code uh, it's not as cool as like the savage one i mean that's I couldn't get that maybe we'll have that by next week but it's 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 real simple uh you can get an extra 15 gallons 15 cents per gallon off uh the first time you use it so you really can't beat that right so there's your freebie. Feel free to share that with people you know. Uh, if you are a first-time viewer, first-time visitor to No Nonsense Market Domination Savvy Show pre-show, welcome. I'll introduce myself again. My name is David Wilson, Business Savage. You call me Savvy. And we're going to have fun. We uh, edutain you. So we're going to have a lot of fun learning about ourselves, learning about entrepreneurship, learning about how to be the best entrepreneurs uh, we can be. This, this is season six of No Nonsense Market Domination on IBGR.network. IBGR.network IBGR is uh, a an, an international business network, uh, business radio network, where comprised of uh, entrepreneurs with like a zillion years of, of experience doing multiple things, right? So we set this up by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs because we want to help. We want to help entrepreneurs all over the uh, all over the world. Uh, get we want to help entrepreneurs all over the world um, get their questions answered, have their challenges resolved. And, and be the best entrepreneurs they can be. So we're excited about that. 11 minutes to live. 
So no matter what stage of business you are in, from pre-startup to startup, growth to hockey stick growth, to uh, slow and steady, nice and easy, business is going great, to it's time to sell and retire, uh, we can help you uh, come grow with us. Hey, come grow with us. All right. Now, I'd be remiss if I did not thank our returning viewers who are with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being back. This is going to be a great show. I'm excited because we're going to, not only are we going to talk about the questions we need to ask, and there's going to be four of them. Uh, I'm also going to highlight some of uh, some of my heroes. I'm going to give you, since you're back, since you're backstage, I'm going to give you a sneak peek. And this is something I'm very proud of. It's a 50th anniversary edition of a magazine that I grew up on. Um, and it's called Black Enterprise Magazine. This man is named is called Earl Graves, Earl Graves Sr. His son is, uh, Earl Graves Sr. died recently. His son, Earl Graves Jr., is now running Black Enterprise Magazine. And it was largely because of Black Enterprise Magazine that I thought it was even possible to be an entrepreneur. Um, and that ties into, so uh, being able to see people who look like me do things that were that I thought were amazing uh, is is very very important and and we just we I don't take that for granted um, and that's part of why I'm here today and that's part of something we're going to talk about today and it's called an origin story an origin story so that's going to come up towards the front of the show nine minutes alive about. Uh, the origin story. It's where we came from. It's where we came from. And it's the journey, the passage of going from that point A to point B. So I am uh, excited to share that with you. Oh, boy. So let's see here. Oh, also the uh, the the get upside information is scrolling along the bottom as well. All right now, I'll leave that up there. Uh, if you want to follow me on uh, the usual socials, um, follow my companies, fund you up, spend down finance, buy books and such, go to allthingsdavidwilson.com. That's allthingsdavidwilson.com. Uh, I've been getting messages about the uh, pocket square line, Savvy Silks. Savvy Silks is still still in the works, so it's on the way. So I appreciate appreciate you asking. So if you don't, if you only have one pocket square, this is the pocket square to own, and uh, it will be it will be released soon. So keep your eyes open for that. What else do we have? While you're here, um, we have I hate networking events. This is a, a book I wrote that is endorsed by the father of modern networking and. The founder of BNI, Dr. Ivan Meisner. So, fun fact: this is available on Amazon, by the way, or at All Things David, or you can go to allthingsdavidwilson.com. But you can also go to I Hate Networking Events.com. But here's a fun fact about this book. Now, Ivan Meisner has is is the father, godfather. I called him the grandfather of modern networking events, and like live to to his face. And and he was like, I I appreciate that, but I don't think I want to be the grandfather. of um, but fun fact, Ivan Meisner has endorsed uh, a myriad of books on networking. And he's written some, some, many of them he has not written, though. Yet he's endorsed them, um, including mine. But here's a fun fact. To my, to my knowledge, as far as I, as far as I know currently, uh, I Hate Networking Events is the only book that Ivan Meisner has endorsed that he has not either written, that he did not write himself, or and that he did not not write. That, let's, let's say that again. Right. So I Hate Networking Events, Ivan Meisner did not contribute to at all. That is the only book that Ivan Meisner did not contribute to at all that he has endorsed. There you go. 
and his name's not on it. So I am the sole author of that book. Why? Uh, why do I say that? Um, because it's unique, and uh, and I'm I'm proud to say that. I don't say that to brag. I say that because I'm proud of it. So I'd love for you to pick it up and read it. It's a manual, especially as we're opening back up. People are getting back out to networking. It'll help you plan your next and, and future networking events, what to do before, during, and after your networking events. Um, I love the book. He loves the book. Um, so you can uh, pick it up. Pick it up on Amazon. And right now, Amazon is running a special. If you have Amazon Prime, they will they will ship you that book free. So I'm just letting you know that. It's a special. It's a special if you have Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, lastly, we will introduce our in-studio engineer, Steve Namin Euphemi, who's in the building. going to do some quick uh, sound checks right quick, sound and lighting. I think we're good. I'm going to slide off the wardrobe real quick. Um, it's not far. I'll be, it's, it's, it's not far. Um, and uh, we'll be right back as we, as we test everything. Uh, stand by. We have uh, about f uh, five minutes to lie. All right, Steve. That's a lot. That's a lot. All right, stand by. Lighting is good. Yeah, I'm in wardrobe now, Steve. Yes. Yeah, I know. Thank you. All right, we're back. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. Four minutes to live. All right, so we're all set. This is going to be a good show. Got my show notes. If you don't, if you need the show notes, you can download those from i um, from ibgr network slash david hyphen wilson. You can get them there. And uh, I think we're all set. So right now, IBGR.network, so IBGR Radio is a 24-7 radio station. So we are live right now. We're not live right now. We are live right now, right? So they are, they are, so it, it always is on. So so when this, there's a, there's a show that's on now that's getting ready to go off and I'm getting ready to go on. So that's how it works. Mm. All right. Going to have a great show. Thank you for uh, joining us on the pre-show. No Nonsense Market Domination. I am David Wilson, the Business Savage. Welcome to the Savvy Show. And we will be live on all platforms in about two and a half minutes. Stand by. Let's have a good show. Thank you. I don't know if you with that. I greatly appreciate you either listening on the air. Or if you've been with me on Facebook or LinkedIn, uh, watching it, uh, I know watching me is YouTube, but uh, I've been convinced that I can do videos. He, he said it, not me. So the, the quote of the day from Bill Eastman, uh, if you're listening live or you're watching, you're listening live or you're watching on Facebook or LinkedIn, I know LinkedIn, watching me is not all that much fun. Uh, he said that, not me. <laughs> Just saying, we got to keep it, we got to keep it light here. All right, Bill, get out of here. All right, here we go. Team at IBGR, the International Business Growth Radio Network, is a great offer for you as a team player. From limited time, you can download our phone app solutions on demand. All right, give me, give me, give me some flames. Give me some emojis out there. Let me know you can hear me. Let me know that you're ready for the show. Let me know that you're ready for the show. If Crazy Sam were here, he would be, he would be my hype man. What? 
That's a good point. So Steve says we, we don't have crazy Sam, but we do have crazy Steve. And right now he's flossing. He's flossing. Okay. All right, Steve. Get him. All right. One and a half minutes to live. One and a half minutes. Also known as 90 seconds. Is it? No, that's not 90. Yeah, it's 90. My tribute to D.L. Hughley. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Last check for uh, downtown Mike. Check, check, check. We're on. All right, 30 seconds to live. 30 seconds to live. Let's have a good show. Here we go. Steve, last check. Lighting's good. Soundboard is good. Okay. Yeah, I got my water. Thirty seconds to live. Yep. I got them. Show notes are here. My cards are here. Yep, we're good. Thank you. Let's go. You know what today is? I, I said, you know what today is? That's right. It's Savvy Day. And the beast of Broad Street is back. And we're going to change the world. You ready? Please say my name. Let's go, just like that. Let's go. Welcome to the Savvy Show. I am David Wilson, the business savage. No nonsense. Market domination here on IBGR.network. Profit radio by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. We are broadcasting live from the capital of South Richmond, Virginia, USA. And it is a beautiful, sunny, cloudy day outside. It's like that. One of those, one of those tweeners, one of those, one of those in between. Uh, it is my pleasure to be with you today. And I am thankful that you will be with me for the next hour here on IBGR.network. We are an international business growth radio station broadcasting live 24-7 in over 80% of the countries in the world. We are by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs, no matter what stage of business you are in, from pre-startup to startup, growth to hockey stick growth, which is really, really, really big growth, to, to slow and steady, nice and easy. Wow, this business is going great. To I am ready to retire and get the most I can get when I sell my business. And I am going to erect a statue, the largest statue of a ferret in the world. It's possible. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. You see, that's the thing. It doesn't matter what stage of business you're in. We're here to help. Come grow with us. Hey, here you. Come grow with us. Love that. We are broadcasting live on IBGR.network on the radio. On the radio. We are also live on television on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitch, and Twitter. So shout out to all of our platforms. 
There's not too many shows out there that you can watch uh, live on television and, and listen to live on the radio. So we are pleased with that. If you are a first time viewer or listener, uh, definitely, definitely welcome. Uh, you can, hopefully you'll enjoy what you see. Tell your friends, share, like, post, subscribe, uh, and, uh, and, and all that, and all that stuff. If you are a returning, a returning viewer or listener, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Because without you, we would only have first time listeners and viewers. Last but not least, I want to introduce my, I, I almost said, oh my God, I'm, whoa, 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 I know, you know what, I'll just go ahead and say it. Because today is about being vulnerable. Today is about being vulnerable. My friend, okay, I, I, I said it, I said it, my, my friend in my in-studio engineer, semi-extraordinaire, Steve, not me and you feel me. And I, and I will say, you know, let me, just, let me just clear up any misconceptions here about our relationship. If it weren't for Steve being my in-studio engineer for No Nonsense Market Domination, I'd be doing all this stuff myself. So thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. All right, you ready? Let's get down to business. Okay, today's today's topic, the questions. The questions, that's the title of our show, the questions. Um, in the show notes, you know, I like I like this better. So in the, in the show notes, there's a description. It says, on this show, as we wrap up, and that was kind of something I wrote, and then I read it again, and I was like, ah, this is better. So as entrepreneurs, we often seek answers, but what are the questions? Find out the questions we should be answering to steep ourselves in authenticity and effectively serve the world. Because really, that's all that's all we're trying to do. We want to authentically provide provide service. And we're going to go over the questions uh, we need to be asking ourselves because because we're trying to. Oh, we're, we're looking at balance sheets. We're looking at profit and loss. We're looking at who our next client needs to be. We're looking at um, how do we keep our current clients. But we're not focusing always on these certain questions. So that's what we're going to cover today. We're actually going to jump, uh, jump right in. Where's my, oh yeah. And um, yeah, we'll do that. Let's do that next, next segment. Just because we have a lot to cover in this one. Um, the first question, the first question, and, and, you know, to our, to our viewers, if you can type this question in, in the chat, that'd be great. It, it is who, who, not Cindy Lou, who, but who, W-H-O, question mark. Um, <clears throat> who are you? Who, who, who are you? We don't, th the answer to this question is, is critical because it determines, I think, the answers to the rest of these questions that we're gonna talk about. So who are you? I was introduced recently to a uh, to a new concept, I think this was season four, or maybe season three, and and we as entrepreneurs, we need to be dedicated to being lifelong learners, <laughs> lifelong learners. And and as a lifelong learner, we we should be trying to we we should be aiming to be one percent better today than we were yesterday, and we have to be we have to we have to get back into reading. For crying out loud, you know I think audio books are good. I, th I think um, the internet is great. Thank you, Al Gore, for inventing the internet. Because without Al Gore, don't write me. Don't don't write me. It's a joke. Don't write me. Um, but we have to get back to reading, like reading books and reading magazines and reading articles. We're going to talk about some magazines later on uh, later on today. Um, this is something called an origin story. So everybody comes from somewhere, right? Everybody has a story. 
everyone's story is different. But the whole idea of the origin story, as it relates to business, as it relates to entrepreneurship, as it relates to uh, sales, marketing, when we are aware of our origin story, it helps us better to be aware of ourselves. But when other people hear our origin story, it helps them better relate to us. And so here comes, here comes, here comes the vulnerability part. Here comes the vulnerability part. If Savvy's going to be vulnerable. Right. Okay. Because I've been thinking, you know, what is my origin story? And I'm beginning, I'm, I, this is a new concept to me. So I'm starting to really put that together and think about, and as I've been thinking about where I came from and what are my influences and, and things are popping up that I did not realize would, would, would pop up. So I was looking back into my life, you know, as, as, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, and I started very young. So my first business was in my neighborhood um, in uh, in Neptune, Neptune, New Jersey, USA. It's relevant. It's relevant. And I was selling water door to door, selling water door to door in cups. And, 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 and I was I was asking people to buy my water for five cents. And I was telling them that my water was better because the air it had absorbed while I was pushing it through the neighborhood made it better. You laugh, you laugh, but I sold a lot of water that day. Now, maybe it was sympathy, but it helped me to see the value of hard work and how it translates into making money. Uh, so I also was exposed to my fair share of business owners in my life. My first was my grandmother. So granny would, granny was a, was a launderer and she took care of shirts and iron shirts and wash shirts for some uh, prominent families in Deal, New Jersey. Also relevant. Um, I used to, I used to hang out in a, in a, uh, a, a men's clothing shop called Mr. Fashion. So I learned a lot from Mr. Fashion and the people that used to come through there. Um, one of my favorite shows growing up was the Jeffersons and, you know, George Jefferson was my hero. <clears throat> um, so all of these started to, to mold me. One experience, though, that I had as a, as a kid, and this, this really helped me turn the corner towards working for myself. And this was in first grade. So I'm going to thank a lady called Elena Leonard. This is Sean Leonard's mom. Sean Leonard's mom drove a hot dog truck. So she would go to three or four car dealerships every day and sell them stuff for, for lunch. And that was her day. That's how she made money. Um, there was a, a first grade performance that we had at a at a nursing home where we were singing Christmas songs or something stupid like that, right, as kids. And I remember distinctly how sad I was because my mother and father said they could come, but they weren't able to get off work. And the only person there to console me was Ms. Leonard. Ms. Leonard was there because she had the flexibility to be there. And I realized as I was thinking about this, that I would, ne I don't ever want uh, any of my, any of my children, any of my family to feel slighted because there was something I could not do because, because I didn't have the flexibility to do it. All right. So there's our who. When we come back, we will get into the what. That is All right, that was solid. Good. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Let's the next question is going to be what? What are we doing here? So we'll jump right into what we got a lot to cover today. I told you this, this is going to be a good show. Yeah, the Neptune Air was crazy. You have no idea. Okay. So go ahead and type in the comments. Um, <clears throat> type in the comments what what not red man what but 
WHAT. Right, we're having fun here, guys. Thank you very much for for being with me. Now we're gonna we're gonna start highlighting some more some more of our uh, heroes. And I really want to dive into because it was I, I didn't I didn't really get a chance to spend enough time on that segment, but that's okay. My hero, DL Hugo. Um, any reason to no rejection connection. All right, one minute to live. Here we go. So you're listening. If you can hear that, that's my commercial for the No Rejection Connection. You can go to the No Rejection Connection dot com. Um, 30 seconds of life. Here we go. Right? <laughs> Attention business owners. We know cash is tight. The barter authority is timing is just a, it's, it's a little bit off. Some, not my timing. So I'm listening to the commercials as they go and I have a window that I come in on and it's just it's just a bit off. So so I'm kind of at the mercy of that, but that's one, just one of those things, right? That's 757-622-4242. Purchase Bill Beecham's book, Smarter Company. So here we go. Welcome back to the Savvy Show. I am David Wilson, the Business Savvy. No nonsense market domination here on IBGR.network. Profit Radio by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Uh, we got a lot to uh, jam into this tiny show today. And uh, in the first segment, um, it was a pleasure to, to highlight some of the entrepreneurs that really helped to mold me early on uh, in my life, uh, especially uh, especially Ms. Leonard. So that just to just to finish that story up, um, I was a mess. So I, I ran into the bathroom. I was crying because everybody had had someone there except for me and Ms. Leonard. So being a very intuitive seven year old, six, seven year old I was, uh, I was able, I understood. So it was not, I was not personal. I was not mad at my mother. I was not mad at my father for not being there. I knew why they couldn't be there. I didn't quite understand why she could until she explained it to me. And once I got that, maybe again, looking back, this is new to me, this whole uh, origin story thing, maybe looking back, I was like, you know what? Okay, I get it. I don't, I don't want this to, I don't like how this feels. I don't want this to happen. So all the soccer games, basketball games, plays, recitals, um, um, singing and dancing and all of that stuff that parents, we just love to go to. No, that's the, Steve. That was not supposed to be, that was not, we just love to go to. <laughs> no, but it, it's, that's cool. All right. So the title of our show, the questions. We're going to move on to our next question because, like I said, we have a lot to uh, cram in here. Next question is what? So I don't see a what typed into the uh, comments. I do see some uh, other stuff typed into the comments that we're just going to delete. So, okay. <laughs> so once we understand the who, we're gonna we need to understand the what. So who are we now? What are we going to do? to contribute to society. What are we going to do to contribute to society? I'm not saying something on purpose because we talk about it all the time and there's a, I just wanna make it much more dramatic than that. 
the, the two things that we must keep in the front of our minds at all times, give, and I'm just trying to help. Give, and I'm just trying to help, right? So what are we going to give? What are we going to contribute? Not what am I going to get? What am I going to make? How? No. What am I going to give? Because that's what every that's what we're all doing. What are we giving to society? Right. Some people some, and gifts are all different. Gifts are all different, but they must be the, the foundation must be on the giving, not what you're going to get from the gift. Um, so I wanted to, the, the, the entrepreneur we're going to highlight in this segment for what is, is my boy, uh, my boy, Damon John. So Damon John, it's a friend of mine. You may have heard of him. Um, he was on, he's on a show currently. It's pretty popular, especially among uh, this crowd in this space. A show called Shark Tank, maybe. So Damon John from, uh, from, from Brooklyn is, you see him today on Shark Tank. Let me let me make this point as well. And this is a this is a takeaway. This is a nugget, a savvy a savvy nugget. Too often we are looking at the the end result we're looking at. So the current picture, the snapshot of of who we're looking at is the product of sometimes decades, decades of struggle, toil. Um, blood, sweat, tears, and it, what you see, it's like, wow, I sure wish I could be fill in the blank. Um, when in fact, you know, most people, most people are not willing to do what we, business owners, entrepreneurs, are willing to do. We want, they want the results, but they don't want to take that type of action. So just be cognizant. I think we all know that, but be cognizant that uh, of the the person we're looking at is a product. The person we're looking at is the diamond that was born from the pressure of two decades, two decades ago. All right. Here's why I'm saying that. And go back, go back to the what. Damon John, before he was on Shark Tank, was the he started a company with, with three of his friends called FUBU, F-U-B-U, for us, by us. Now, uh, Savvy, what does that have to do with, with what? Well, early on in, in, uh, in Damon's life, going back to origin story, you know, he got introduced to uh, entrepreneurship as well. Um, he, he grew up, you know, he didn't have all the finer things in life, you know, like, food and, and you know, stuff like that. And he he came to understand the value, not only the value of hard work, but the value of working hard for yourself, being able to control the direction of that hard work and how to make it uh, make it into into something big. So here's the what. So Damon, when he when he started FUBU. Now, mind you, for us, by us, the us is us, right? So the for us is us, the by us is us. What he saw, what he saw was a, a hole in the market. And this is how it started. It started with hats, right? There are these fancy hats that, that used to have things coming down the ears and then the top was tied up and had a thing, floppy thing. And what was happening was these hats were costing $20, and what he said was, well, you know what? You know, I want to make a product that's more affordable for us. But I don't know any of the uh, manufacturers. I don't know. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, guess just going to go back to Red Lobster because we can't, we don't know. Well, no, that's not what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs are trailblazers. Entrepreneurs find a way. You figure it out. 
So what he figured out, he figured out what he could do. So that was get the material and put out at least a similar product. And because there's no middleman, sell it for less. But he found out the challenge was he didn't know how to sell. He didn't know how to sell. But guess what? Guess who knew how to sell? His mom knew how to sell. So his mom taught him how to sell. So what they did was they put all these hats together. They sold, they, they, they sold, it was something like 80 to 100 hats by hand. Well, like with a, like a sewing machine, but still, it, it wasn't mass produced, right? And they, and they took them out onto a Jamaica Ave and sold them and made $800 for the hats. Hats turned into T-shirts. T-shirts turned into, well, so Scully's turned into T-shirts, turned into uh, fitted hats, turned into jackets, turned into a product placement in a Gap commercial by LL, uh, LL Cool J, right? Turned into a deal with a company called Samsung Textiles. Who's Samsung Textiles? Don't they make phones? You know, it's just like, no. So Samsung Textiles at the time um, made clothes and they produced the clothes for FUBU. Uh, the company was later sold for some kind of billions of dollars and there's the story. <clears throat> so this story, as well as um, in our next segment, when we talk about our next, uh, our next question, there's that they will funnel down into a lesson. So stay tuned for the lesson. Here's a fun fact, though, about about uh, Damon John. So Damon John, did you know? Did you know that Damon John almost turned down Shark Tank? Almost turned it down. And he turned it down because of something we talked about last week. So if you missed last week's show, you can uh, go to ibgr.network slash David hyphen Wilson. You can go back or you can, so you can um, subscribe to the podcast. Every show is turned into a podcast. Listen to last week's show where we talked about AACE. And so ACE was an acronym. The A was arrogance per Damon John. Because the one of the steps, stipulations of being on Shark Tank was that you had to use your own money. So he had just got out, gotten out of FUBU. He got the exit from FUBU, wanted to go buy a chinchilla fur or whatnot. And they were like, oh, yeah, we want you to be on Shark Tank. This is a new show, new concept. Blah, 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 blah. But you got to use your own money. He was like, man, I ain't trying to use my own money. How dare you? I'm Damon John. I'm Damon John. All right. No problem. <laughs> And he thought about it and he was like, wait a minute. And he, he talked it over with some folks and said, this might be a good idea. He tells that story as his, how his arrogance almost lost him something that is a much bigger deal than even, than even food. So we have to keep that in mind. All right, now you gotta remind me, I don't wanna lose track, but we have to, um, we go into the next segment. We have to bring those two together, funnel those two down to the lesson, to the nugget. That's going to be a good one. All right, we'll see you on the other side. Savvy. All right, good set there. Okay. Next question. I'm going to throw that into the uh, into the chat. Next question is going to be how. It's going to be how. And we're going to talk about. I'll get out. I will release this to you guys. We're going to talk about my. You know, someone I started listening to when I was uh, when I was much younger, much much younger. Um, 
cat named Les Brown. So if anybody has any Les Brown stories, uh, you can put them in the in the comments. Love Les Brown. Uh, Les Brown was a radio guy, is a radio guy. That's where he started. And, uh, and so Les, Les Brown's story is a good one. And it's similar to Damon John's story about um, the, well, Damon John's story about both the connection to the textile company, uh, Samsung Textile, as well as the the serendipity. It's, it was serendipitous to them. I think it was very intentional for, for LL to do it. Uh, but the benefit they gained from that Gap commercial. And Gap had no idea what was going on. So we'll talk about that in the uh, next segment. And we're about, we're rolling, guys. This is This is great. Thank you for being with me. Again, allthingsdavidwilson.com. You can follow me there. Uh, like, share, tell everybody about this show. If you like it, tell everybody about it. If you don't like it, just keep watching and just don't tell anybody about that. All right, uh, 45 seconds to live. 45 seconds to live. How? How, how, how? How now, brown cow? Okay. All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Savvy Show. I am David Wilson, Business Savage, No Nonsense Market Domination here on IBGR.network Profit Radio. No matter what stage of business you are in, from pre startup to startup, from growth to hockey stick growth to slow and steady, nice and easy, this business is going great, to I want to start a new restaurant concept worldwide that allows you to bring both ferrets and chinchillas in to eat with you. Good retirement plan. No matter what stage of business you're in, we're here to help. Come grow with us. Hey. Hey. Come grow with us. All right, we are back on the Savvy Show. We are into segment three, the questions. The questions. We are going to be talking in segment three about how, 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 how is our question. And we're going to be talking about a guy by the name of Les Brown. So we have some uh, a great Les Brown story uh, that was put in through Facebook. <laughs> and it was about it was about a time when um Lessa did a con he, he contracted a lady to make some tape to buy some tapes and um and the the lady the lady died and someone was telling i mean that's not funny but the lady did die and and she died and his exclamation when someone was telling him the story about what she said and he was just like did she say anything about me <laughs> And the way he tells it, he's a, he's a, he is a master, master storyteller, Les Brown. Master storyteller. Which segues perfectly into how. That's the next question. How. How are you going to give? How are you going to help? So Les Brown was born, the, the, the first... I think the first two, right? Well, I, I was born in in uh, in Jersey, Neptune, New Jersey. Shout out, it's relevant. Damon Johnson, Brooklyn, New York. Les Brown is from a place called Liberty City, Florida. Liberty City, Florida. If you've ever been, um, it's a tough place to grow up. Tough place to grow up for a kid. Um, a lot of poverty. Les grew up as a 
as a kid. He had a twin, twin brother. He was he was labeled as a child. And um, it's funny. I didn't I, I didn't I didn't think about this when I put this show together, but it's it's funny how all of this stuff just kind of it starts with that what origin story again. This is the origin story. And when when Damon John tells his story, he's telling his origin story. When when Les Brown tells his story, he's telling his origin story and it helps people to relate to them. So when you hear Les Brown talking about how he was labeled as a child as something called educable, mentally retarded, educable, mentally retarded. Now, aside from the fact that you probably couldn't even say those words today right, without somebody jumping on you or putting you or putting you out there. It was a devastating label for a child to have because what that meant was you are destined to be nothing. You are destined to be an an unintelligent dolt. In fact, you are labeled as that. And for whatever reason, Les Brown did not buy into that. So he did not allow his circumstances to determine who he was. He did not allow that to be his story because he could have. He could have said he could have been, you know, sitting on, you know, sitting somewhere on a curb or something. It was like, yeah, I remember when I was labeled educable, being mentally retarded. Yeah, past, past the 40, son. It could have been that. But instead, instead, don't write me. Instead, it was it was what we see, who we see today. And I'll and I'll throw this at you as well. When when we see the man or the woman before us and we know their origin story, not only does it make them more relatable, not only does it make them. Um, where did I write that down? Not only does it make them more more relatable. Hold on, because I, I, I more inspirational. It, may, it makes them more more inspirational because you understand how far they came to get to this point. All right. Uh, the, this how has everything to do with, you know, some, well, has, has something to do with experience. Has, what experiences do you have? What interests do you have? We all, I believe, have a duty to give back to the world, to give to the world. Okay, we have a duty to do that. And we just have to find a mechanism by, by which to do it. So um, a, famous, a, a famous dad once said this, um, one of his son's friends asked him, said, uh, you know, Dr. Huxtable, you and Mrs. Huxtable, you have like the perfect life. Um, you're, you're a successful doctor. She's a successful lawyer. And here I am, I'm in high school. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I have no idea what I want to do. I have, I, I'm just confused. Can, what advice can you give me? Because I'm interested in this, 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 and this. Kind of like uh, one of the ladies in the club in uh, coming to America. I want to be an actress, but I really want to write, write poems and I want to write songs and then I want to sing. I want to produce and I want to, his response, pick one, pick one. And it's, and, and it's very similar to something I say to my kids. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. Pick something and put 100% of your effort into whatever it is you choose. That's your give back. That's the how. How you give to the world. Les Brown failed multiple times before he got his big break when the guy on the radio who he was interning for and he was getting his coffee and he he was interning for him did not show up. So the manager of the radio station um, called him up and, and, and said, Les Brown, 
Where is, I'm gonna call him Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. We're just gonna, cause I don't remember his name. Cause there was dead air. The folks here at IBGR will tell you that the worst thing you can hear, you can say something just completely stupid. That's better than dead air. That's, that's, that's better than dead air. Like, what did he say? I have no idea, but it's not dead air. <laughs> so the, 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 the station manager was listening and he heard dead air. So he calls the station. So Les Brown answers the phone. Yes, sir. Like, is, where, where, where is Steve? He's not here, sir. And there was a guy on call, if I recall. And then a guy, well, you need to call, you need to call John in to take his place. Okay, sir. And he hangs up the phone. And what Les Brown did, I'm, I'm probably screwing the story up, but what, but, but it's the, the end is right. So what Les Brown did was he seized the day. Because he had been waiting, he had been showing up, he had been stepping up to the plate, he had had his bat, he had been swinging and missing for so long. Finally, he steps in and he does his thing. You know, I'm, 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 I'm boogie down, Les Brown here to take take you all to town. You know that type of thing on the on the radio, kind of like what I do. And and he sees the day. And he started playing music, and he he was he became the DJ that day. Um, which leads me to what I wanted to, the point I was trying to make from the segment prior. So both Les Brown and Damon John benefited from good luck. We said, but I don't believe in luck. I believe in serendipity. You don't get lucky if you're not there. <laughs> You don't you don't get lucky if you're not there. You don't get hits if you don't if you don't swing. That's right. Yeah, one of the things we just had a comment come in. It's like drink, rock, drink. Yeah, because because the because Steve, I named him Steve. So I guess his name was Rock, if that if that's correct. Thank you to uh listener Anoint Ashore. Um and so he, he was <clears throat> he was on a bender and he didn't show up for work. So here's my point though. Before we before we go into the last segment, so uh, Damon John benefited from the product placement of LL Cool J. Had he not had a product, it couldn't have been placed. Okay, Les Brown benefited from agreeing to be to work. I don't think I think he was working for nothing. I think he was just an unpaid intern and he agreed to do that because that kept him in the game. Sewing hats kept Damon John and Fubu in the game. And so many of us we we want to get we want to get to the daggone mountaintop without having to take a step up the mountain. And that's crap. We have to be willing to play the game. And things like this happen. And look, what if, what if Les Brown said, man, I ain't trying to work for no money. I ain't trying to work for free. He'd probably be sitting on a curb, right? Talking to, who did I, who was I saying? <laughs> talking to probably Rock and, and Damon John talking about, yeah, you know, I used to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> it's a tough gig. That was a reference to Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Thank you very much. All right, so when we come back from break, We're going to wrap it up in uh, season, uh, we're going to wrap it up in segment four, where we are going to talk about the all-important why, the all-important why. We'll see you on the other side. You know who this is, Savvy. Oh, this is so much fun. Okay. All right, so thank you for the comments. The comments are great. Uh, just breathe in. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so let's see. We got Drink Rock Drink, Cosmo Center. So it's, I think this is a reference to. So we got from Annoying. I used to open my presentations with I am you and you are me because we all have one experience that is the same, even if it's just breathing. Okay, excellent. That, that speaks directly to that being relatable, 
that that being relatable and being inspirational. So that's a that's a that's a very good comment there. Some digging to another level, and yes, also this is a reference to so Todd Smith. For those of you who don't know, is um, well, LL Cool J um, definitely did elevate. Dame to and Fubu to another level. It was there was there was no doubt about that, no no doubt about it. I mean, it was intense, in intensely to another level. All right, so we are going to wrap it up. Thank you all for being with us. This is going to be this is going to be a great segment. I can't say this is going to be my favorite segment, um, but this is going to be a, an important one because it's going to talk. We're going to talk about the why. So type in why into the comments. Give me some flames. Uh, give me any type of emoji, any type of emote you like. Uh, thank, <clears throat> thank you to Facebook. Thank you to uh, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. We appreciate you. Definitely. And thank you. Without you, we couldn't have, uh, this show would not have been possible, at least not with anybody watching. So, just being honest. That's right. Okay, we have 30 seconds to live. 30 seconds to live. Since we got the cops out there. <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome back to the Savvy Show. I am David Wilson, the business savage. IBGR.network. No nonsense market domination by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs, no matter what stage of business you are in. From pre startup to startup, to growth to hockey stick growth, to slow and steady, nice and easy, to I'm ready to sell this thing and retire, make as much money as possible. <clears throat> Doesn't matter to us. We're here to help. Come grow with us. Hey, come grow with us. <clears throat> Did you know that IBGR has an app? Did you know that IBGR has an app? So you can go to your favorite app store, either Apple or Android, and type in IBGR, download the app, and you can listen to on-air talent on IBGR 24-7 because it's 24-7 international business growth radio station. <clears throat> you can learn more about on-air talent, uh, biographies, to download show notes and what have you. But the best thing of all, the best thing of all is you can have savvy in the palm of your hand. It's awesome. It's awesome. Can't beat that, folks. Our government title of the show, The Questions. The Questions. We are going over the questions. How did I succinctly put it? As entrepreneurs, we often seek answers, but what are the questions? Find out the questions we should be answering to steep ourselves in authenticity and effectively serve the world. Effectively serve the world. <laughs> the next question, oh boy, the peanut gallery, man. The peanut gallery on YouTube. <laughs> Our final question is why, the all important why. And the why has been a theme for this season. It's really been a theme for last season. You'll hear this. Uh, you'll hear this throughout the all the shows on on the network. Because if you don't understand your why, and you see how these all these all funnel down and connect. We uh, we start with who. So I need, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you're going to do to. Uh, to give, what you're going to do to try to help, how you're going to do it, and then why, why are you going to do it? And then why, also, why are they your audience? Why are that, why is your audience hearing you? Why are they, go back to, go back to the origin story, right? 
Why are they relating to you? Why are they inspired by you? Do you see, do you see how this all comes together? This is it right here. And, it, and it's funny, everything I'm talking about today is part of my origin story. It might be a small piece, it might be a bigger piece, but it's part of my origin story, right? Let's get to it. So I have before me, that's in front of me, rather. I don't want to be all Shakespearean about it. <laughs> a copy of the 50th anniversary edition of Black Enterprise Magazine. On the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine is the late is the late Earl G. Graves Sr. This magazine, I have not opened this magazine. It's in a bag, which is where which is where it will stay. I might get one that I'll read, but this one is going to stay in a bag. <clears throat> um, I told you. So let's let's talk let's talk about Earl Graves' why first. So what is a why? What is your purpose? What is your mission? Why do you do what you do? Earl Graves. Um, got to a point where he he realized that stories about business people that looked like him were not being told in the mainstream magazines. They just weren't being told. They weren't being told in the fortunes. They weren't being told in the Forbes. So we need to deliver news about black people, black business people to black business people where where no outlet existed hence the the birth of black enterprise magazine uh, just a tidbit i learned in black enterprise magazine about a cat named reginald lewis when i learned about reginald lewis i'll, I'll just give you uh, i'm just going to read you what i wrote about him in, in my notes i learned about reginald lewis of tlc beatrice who at the time uh, executed the largest uh, leveraged buyout in the, the history of business and created the first uh, Black-owned conglomerate that had uh, revenues over a billion dollars. And the way they told his story, um, the way they, they showed this guy, he was always in a suit, he had a cigar, and you know he would ride around in, in you know he, he would have his cadillac and drop wait well it, 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 but, he, but he would i mean this is what happened this is what happened and the way they took this this was a this was a bad dude this was a bad dude now me as a kid growing up it's like the only you know we saw bad dudes in the movies right we saw bad dudes like like um Will Chamberlain or Bill Russell as there's nothing, I'm not taking anything away from them, but it was so important for me to see a bad mama jamma on in business. Cause to me, that was like, okay, wow. All right. You can do that and be a bad dude. And that's what Reginald Lewis was. And he, he orchestrated these takeovers, these, 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 <laughs> these buyouts. And it was just amazing to me as as I learned about it and I and when I when I first got turned on to Black Enterprise there's so many stories in there about people who look like me people who look like him and it provided v validation not that you can't kick down the door right but you you read about other people who kick down the door too and that was that was very important to a as I was growing and learning and becoming who I am today, writing my origin story. All right. So that's that was his why. Um, so he really. Uh, going back to Earl Graves. So Earl Graves needed to do something that satisfied his why i will tell you this and i don't i've never met earl graves but i bet you this i bet you he did not start a magazine he did not start a magazine for the money 
He was like, yo, what can I do to get rich? Oh, start a magazine. Okay, I, I, that's probably not how it happened. That's, that's, that's probably not how it happened. Um, he started the magazine because it needed to be done. He started the magazine because he was given. He was started. He started the magazine because he was trying to help. And posthumously, the way people spoke about Earl Graves, it it would bring it would goosebumps, goosebumps at how he changed so many people's lives. He changed so many people's lives. Comments coming in. Um, Steve be like, drink savvy, drink. No, that's not a good That was supposed to be automatically deleted. All right. Representation matters. Seeing people that look like you matter. All these are our comments that are that are coming in on Facebook as, as the show this is happening right now live. Oh, and thank you so much. So here's another here's a here's a comment and I'll I'll, I'll humbly share this with you. Um, it is true that David Wilson, the business savage, was also featured in Black Enterprise magazine. So I was in, I think it was 2017, 2016, 2018. So uh, thank you for, for that. I appreciate that. You can find that somewhere. Probably Google David Wilson, Black Enterprise. I hate networking events. Something will come up. So you know I'm not lying. I would make it up. <laughs> But here's, here's the point that I want to leave you with in terms of why. If, if you look at everyone, so at all of the examples we gave had a, have a why. All of the examples we, we talked about had all of the questions attached to them, right? So going back, so we, we go through who, what, how and why so we go back to from ms leonard to granny to mr fashion to george jefferson to damon john to earl graves to um les brown all ha all had those questions as part of their story but here's what i'll leave you with And this is a huge takeaway. We all have the potential. Strike that. I don't think this is a stretch. We all have the duty to change the world. And we're all going to change the world regardless of what we think. Regardless of our vocation, regardless of who we speak to, regardless of the businesses we start or don't start, regardless of the money we make or don't make, regardless of the, any of that. We are, we are, as souls, destined to change the world, period. But your why cannot be driven by ego or money. It cannot be driven by ego or money. I submit to the core, that if your why is driven by ego or money, primarily, you, you, you are destined for misery. Destined for misery. So ask those questions, find that, find that why, and let's make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to David Wilson, the business savage on No Nonsense Market Domination, the Savvy Show. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Woo! That was good. Thank you. Oh. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. That was a, that was a great show. That might have that might have been the best show of the season. Um, I really um, put my put myself into that. Not 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 egotistically put myself into it, but I kind of let go and allowed myself to be in that. If 
if um, if that's if that makes sense, just a, in a sense of vulnerability. So I enjoyed sharing that. The the origin story thing has been um, it's it's very very new, uh, but it is life changing, world changing, because it's helped me to recall that that story about Ms. Leonard. I, 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 I'm there. I could be there right now. I could, I could be there right now. I could, I can, cause I know exactly where the nursing home is. It's in Neptune. Um, and I remember damn near locking myself in the bathroom and she knew why I was in there. I was upset. I was upset because no one came to see me and everybody had, you had, you saw cats. It was like, man, I didn't even know he had parents. And then, you know, they, they just, they just show up and it's like, who, who are you? I was like, Oh, I'm Steve's, I'm Steve's dad. I was like, and I'm Steve's mom. I was like, wow. I just thought he just appeared in school every day. Right. Even, even they had people there. They might've had a cousin or the bus driver decided, Oh, I'm gonna come and represent him or her or whatnot. But I had nobody. Like everybody was working. And she comforted me and, and she, she explained to me how she was able to and, and how they weren't. And, oh, your parents still love you. It's just that they couldn't make it today because they have to work to make sure uh, you have the things you need. And, you know, the type of thing you would expect um, a, a parent to say to a child the, and, and a non-parent adult who has children to say to to a child to to comfort them? So shout out to uh, Elena Leonard because that was again thinking back, thinking back that that had to be one of the the, the major turning points, tipping points in, in my life, and I recalled it for the first time in so long. Um, today to be to be frank with you as i was putting my as i was putting my show notes together as i was putting my cards together that's when that's when i recalled it and i was like holy cow this is this is the origin this is this is a huge part of my my origin story you know watching my grandmother work so hard not realizing until i was much older than i probably should have been that she was an entrepreneur. You say what you want. You say what you want about the dynamic of the country. You say what you want about um, that construct. But she was, an, she was an entrepreneur. She figured it out. She found a way. She found a way. And, that, and that's what we do. She found a way where there was none. Sim sim simple as that. You know, Mr. Fashion starting a starting a, a men's fashion company uh, because um, black men couldn't go to Steinbach's. Black men couldn't go to Abraham and Strauss. So he'll start his own and making making the connections in the, in the garment district to get into the rag business. That was a dangerous thing to do. That was a risky thing to do. I was able to watch that happen. Not so, not so much the start, but the, the the flourishing of that so uh and of course um you know george jefferson fictional fictional character but but there's there's a lot of reality to george jefferson so ladies and gentlemen i, I thank you uh for for listening to me uh ramble on after the show in the post show no nonsense market domination uh thank you so much for being here Last season of the sh last show of the season will be next week. I have no idea what we're going to do. I'll figure it out sometime next week, after, I assume. <laughs> um, but think that here's what I'll leave you with think about your questions and think about your origin stories because that's where it's at. When we figure out what our, what our narrative is, what the story is, and be honest, be truthful, be truthful, really turn inward and 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 find and find that truth and whatever it is whatever it is any anything i'm not going to throw out a bunch of stuff because i'm going to end up throwing out a bunch of stuff that i'm not and didn't happen to me and then you're gonna be like, oh you think you better than me and that's that's not what that's not what i'm saying that's not what i'm saying 
but figure it out because it's because of that that's gotten you here. And you are here to change the world. You are here to affect someone, even if it's just one person, even if it's just one person and inspire someone when you give and tell your story. Thank you, everybody. You have been watching David Wilson, No Nonsense Market Domination, The Savvy Show, The Business Savage, here on Facebook, here on YouTube, here on Twitter, and here on Twitch. We will see you next week, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, broadcasting live from the capital of South Richmond, Virginia, USA. Um, by the way, come about 15 minutes early for the pre-show. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.